saw what they believed to be a muzzle sticking through a fence line on the exterior portion of the golf course. Uh, they confronted the individual uh, and shots were fired. Of course, we're also seeing this picture as it is going to be out there quite a bit of what they say are an AK style rifle with a scope two backpacks, a GoPro as well. So this is the image uh, that they were showing at this press conference uh, of this assassination attempt. They did pursue the individual uh, they believe that is connected to this on I-95. They do have him in custody. Uh, they said there was no statement yet from the suspect. All right, let's continue here on Live Now from Fox, bring into the conversation national security expert, Hal Kemper. Hal, thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. I know you were just listening into that press conference. They gave some details about the suspect, what the suspect had, the pursuit, and also the threat level. They called it high. What do we make of it? What are the main focal points you saw from that press conference? Andy, what I saw was the security. Of course, as you mentioned, the bubble around the uh, former president. Uh, in this case, it pushes out maybe four or 500 yards. They don't close down the entire golf course, but they push it out to the, the hole ahead of him. And uh, the Secret Service detected the uh, AK-47, the muzzle pointed through the fence line. Uh, you know, what we do know is that the Secret Service took the shooter uh, under fire. Uh, what's not clear is if the shooter ever actually fired uh, it's possible. They said there's going to be more information on that, and I'm sure they have to do some ballistics, look at the weapon to find out if it was fired. But um, but they did take him under fire. He immediately um, egressed out of the area, uh, got out of there, jumped into his pickup truck is what it looks like, and his Nissan pickup truck. And uh, it was very fortuitous that there was a witness there that had the presence of mind to take a picture. So you had a picture of the truck, and they had the license plate. and and the, he took off, but because uh, that area around West Palm Beach has what's called ALPERS, the Automated License Plate Reading System, yeah. and this is very common around many urban areas, uh, that they have this primarily for auto theft, but they also deal with other types of crimes. But they have this, so it immediately picked it up when it went on the I-95, and they were able to give the next county over the information of what the truck looked like. They were able to send the picture of the whole bit, and they were able to make a traffic stop and uh, very fortunately, uh, there was, it uh, sounds like the traffic stop was without serious incident. In other words, uh, he didn't open fire on them or anything like that. Traffic stops, as, as anyone in law enforcement will tell you, can be some of the most dangerous enforcement operations out there. This one, fortunately, did not turn into a dangerous operation. They have a lot of details, and it's fascinating to me that the FBI has assessed this was an attempted assassination already. Now, one could make an, a certainly an app based on just a picture of everything you see there, uh, I, you know, that'd be a logical conclusion. But it's possible that when they took him into custody, he may have said something too, which kind of removed all doubt. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's very, it's interesting how fast they moved on this, but uh, clearly we've gone from uh, a situation where initially there were reports of shots in the vicinity Correct. Of, uh, of, of, of President Trump. Honestly, you know, shots being fired in Southern Florida, not an exceptional sort of thing that happens all right so uh, you can't you can't say that was an assassination attempt but now it's really got down to yes it was it was clearly somebody was there and he had an assault rifle had an ak-47 with a scope very interesting combination ak-47s uh just the iron sights not the best i know i know there are some people who love them but they're not a great long-range weapon generally speaking with a scope you can add a little bit more distance on it you know, maybe 300, 400 meters, uh, you know, fairly accurate uh, with the AK-47 because of the type of weapon it is. You could do some rapid fire. Uh, so he would probably compensate for the accuracy of the weapon with a lot of uh, 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 firepower, a lot of rounds going uh, downrange, 7.62 round, uh, 7.62 um, caliber. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a heavier round than, than say, your 5.56, like you can see with an AR-15. And that may be a decision based on, you know, the Secret Service protection and everything else that he wanted, a, a round with more stopping capability, more penetration capability. So he was looking at the volume of fire that would be fired. Uh, and, and also, I wouldn't be surprised if those backpacks, they find some uh, 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 extra magazines, uh, and he was planning on engaging them for quite some time. 
uh, as best you can. Of course, the GoPro, fascinating. The GoPro, uh, we've seen that with other terrorist attacks, specifically the one I think of in, in New Zealand at Christchurch at the mosque where the shooter actually did a terrorist attack on the mosque and he live streamed with a GoPro the entire event. Clearly, based on what we're seeing here, if he had a GoPro there, uh, the thing they're gonna look at is, was he planning on live streaming this uh, assassination attempt? And, uh, and and based on what I'm seeing, I, it's probably a, a, a safe inference that that was his uh, that was his intent. Yeah, a, a very scary, terrifying moment. Just as we're getting more details about it, because like you mentioned, the initial report coming in from the Trump campaign that there were gunshots in the vicinity of the former president Donald Trump while he was on the golf course, something he does very, very frequently. Let's talk about that uh, AR uh, AK style rifle as well and the scope. They mentioned the uh, kind of range of that 300 to 500 yards uh, as well. Maybe how, uh, how in, in just kind of layman's terms, how far is that and, and what does the Secret Service do uh, kind of knowing the range of some of these weapons that might be out there? Yeah, 500 yards, you could you could hit something, certainly with a scope. If you'd been out there, you, you, you know, you, you've sighted it in, you've got your, as we say, dope on the weapon, and, uh, and you've done some other things, you know, where you really, you know, you got the correct range, you've compensated for the wind, stuff like that. Uh, yes, you could possibly hit out to 500 yards. Uh, I don't know that you'd 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 hit a bullseye out of 500 yards or something like that, but you could put rounds in the uh, uh, definitely in the vicinity of uh, of the president and 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 everyone around him. And the thing with the AK-47, though, and and we don't know if this one was more likely than not semi-automatic, not fully automatic. Although that's very possible. If it was fully automatic, though, you're not going to get a long-range shot. Fully automatic, uh, it's just too too tough to control the weapon. Semi-automatic, though. Uh, he could put a significant volume of fire uh, into uh, the area uh, of where the president would be. And uh, that may have been his goal. And of course, with the AK-47, as I mentioned earlier, that's a little bit bigger round. That's a 7.62 millimeter round. That's bigger than what you see with the AR-15, which is normally a 5.56 millimeter round. Uh, there's a little bit different philosophy uh, in, in terms of the U.S. versus the, uh, this was a, a, a essentially a Russian weapon. Uh, initially, I don't know where this one was made, but it, was, it originally came from Russia. Uh, the thought was that they wanted a heavier round with more stopping power. Uh, that's also a consideration, though, when you're looking at uh, a president who's surrounded by Secret Service agents wearing body armor, and uh, and that may have been what he was thinking, which is he wanted a heavier round, more Uh, you know that he was going to compensate for the fact that you got a relatively less accurate weapon than some other weapons out there but uh but you have a heavier round that may have been his thinking on that of course i will tell you too there's there's a number of folks out there um uh certainly in violent extremists that that they love uh ak-47s and i always find that rather interesting i always find it fascinating when someone is uh you know uh anti-government and and they're anti and they and they decry communism uh at every other turn and then they say and they love the ak-47 i go well if you ever looked at where the weapon actually came from but uh, um but you will hear that kind of Yeah, of course, Helen. The feed going a little yeah. bit in and out uh, right here, but we're going to stick with it because we're getting new information. I want to put up this here on social media. This a post on X from John Schneider. He is a Florida state rep. He's the son of the Martin County Sheriff. Thing the suspect in custody related to the Trump shooting incident is a white male in his mid 60s. So we're getting these new incidents and it's an interesting contrast to what we learned uh, with Thomas Matthew Crooks, kind of the opposite and a younger individual. What do we make of this uh, new detail and what are they kind of asking him during some of these interviews? Because you imagine they're trying to learn a little bit about him, uh, about a possible motive, uh, potentially anyone around him that might have known about this. What do we make of this latest detail, Hal? One thing that jumps out at that, uh, interesting, uh, white male, uh, okay, uh, I don't want to, you know, speculation at this point, what his motivations are, uh, but uh, one of, of course, one of the things would be, is it an ISIS-inspired thing? Uh, is it uh, something maybe tied to the Iranian um, uh, plots? 
uh, a white male in his mid 60s would be a less likely suspect. Not, I wouldn't rule it out, but it'd be a less likely suspect with those particular motivations. So it's going to be uh, kind of interesting to figure out what exactly is uh, this person's motivation. And we have seen uh, assassination attempts from the far left and the far right. Uh, I would remind you that there was an attack. Um, uh, the, in fact, uh, uh, Representative Scalise was uh, seriously injured, almost killed, or seriously wounded, almost killed in an attack uh, on, on members of Congress when they were uh, practicing for the uh, uh, you know, the annual uh, congressional baseball game, uh, that he was a far left uh, in, uh, an, or far left assassin. And then, of course, we've seen far right assassins as well. So it could be anywhere on that spectrum. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you at this point. It would seem less likely, though, not impossible, but less likely that this person is tied to, uh, uh, tied to uh, uh, an Iranian plot. And, of course, I say that because that is as an active plot to try and assassinate senior members of the Trump administration. And certainly they, they would probably by inference want to take out President Trump himself if they could. And uh, so it's, it would seem less likely. So that's all I can really, uh, at this point with that little of information, uh, that's probably all I can really derive from that. Yeah, the